Today, I'm going to be installing and reviewing Puppy Linux, which I just found out today has had a whole lot of changes since the first time I ever played with it about 12 years ago or so. Uh, so back then, the whole selling point of Puppy Linux was that it was this super lightweight Linux distro that ran inside of your RAM. Like it basically loaded the whole thing into RAM, uh, just like with Tails OS. But the reason for doing this was different than Tails. You know, with Tails, you're loading everything into RAM for the purposes of ultimate privacy, right? If, if uh, something is loaded into RAM, there's usually no trace of it once you shut down your computer, unless you like yank the RAM sticks out right away and throw them in like liquid nitrogen or something like that to try to freeze their state. Um, but with Puppy Linux, the idea of it was that computers back in the day were really, really slow, right? And they all had hard disk drives. They didn't have solid state drives. Well, maybe some of them did 12 years ago, but like certainly not when it was created in 2003. SSDs weren't a thing. So everyone was booting and running all their programs and operating systems off of hard disks, which were so painfully slow. Nobody, nobody wanted to deal with that. But since Puppy Linux was just loaded into your RAM, it was a whole lot snappier. And it was able to pull off loading everything into RAM because it's a very small Linux distro. It idles at uh, maybe about 350 megs or so, and it probably idled at less back in the day. Now fast forward to 2021, and Puppy Linux has become a meta distro, sort of like Gentoo. Um, so it's technically not just one thing anymore. Um, but with Puppy Linux, you're still basically getting a stripped down, simpler version of other distros like Slackware or Debian. Uh, typically, you would want to choose a Puppy Linux puppet, which is the rule that they use for, I guess, different flavors of Puppy Linux. Um, you'd want to choose one to put on an old laptop or a desktop that maybe doesn't run so great with regular Linux distros like Mint on it, or you know, if it's a laptop that is so old that it's basically going to scream at you if you try to install Windows 10 to it. That's kind of the niche that uh, Puppy Linux occupies now. Um, another important thing to mention before we get into Puppy Linux is that it still is pretty much a just works distro. Um, it's really easy to install and easy to use, but I really wouldn't consider this to be like a work distro. Um, it, it works, but you wouldn't want to use it to do work, if that makes sense, because by default, you're going to be running as a root user. And Puppy Linux, it isn't really meant to be a multi-user system, so it wouldn't be appropriate for using it in like an office uh, or using it in a school on like a library or computer lab or something like that. Um, so ultimately, I would say that Puppy is best meant for maybe a grandpa or like your mom or your dad who just wants to browse the internet and send emails from time to time and they don't want to go get a new laptop. They want to use their like 12-year-old um, ThinkPad or whatever they have. Um, but yeah, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so I'm going to download the Focal uh, Fossa Puppet. Um, I tried out the Slackware one, but there was some weird like buggy thing where my mouse wasn't calibrated correctly. So this is what I'm going with. And you can see it's very lightweight. So it's, uh, whoop, it's, uh, 409 megabytes so it's um it's it's basically maybe three times as large as chromium right the browser so very small even for a linux distro so i've already got it set up here in virtualbox um pretty much the same settings that I usually use for these distro reviews. So we're giving it, well, actually I'm, I'm giving it a little bit less because it's meant to run on very low spec hardware. So two gigs of RAM and I gave it two threads from my processor um, and just cranked up the video memory because why not? So let's start this bad boy up. And so, just hit enter. And it loads up really fast too, compared to other Linux distros. Uh, should just be a few more seconds here.
All right, and there we go. So you get this uh, quick setup screen where you know you basically can change your language and everything. Um, all this looks fine. I'm not in LA, but whatever. Uh, I will change this though because uh, I speak American English, not Great Britain English. We won that war. You know, we have our own corrupt government and taxes now. And let's do for the host name Heckin Pupperino. Um, oh, and then there's there's this thing here. Actually, I might as well just click the infograph and uh, we can take a look at what this is all about. So run internet apps as spot. So like I said, you're a root user by default, which, eh, you know, in a lot of cases that, that wouldn't be really good. But if you're just someone who's at home using your own uh, computer and like nobody else is going to use it, it's not that big a deal. Um, but you do have sort of like these, they're not really other users, but they're basically just limited modes. Well, Finn technically is another user, um, but you have root and you have spot. So root is root, right? It can do anything, um, but you can run things as spot, which is, um, well, just like it says. So it's not a normal user. You don't log in a spot. Instead, you boot up. And in normal ways, the root user, but you can choose to run some applications as the restricted spot user. So basically, if you want to run some applications, like applications that connect to the internet as spot so that they can't possibly get hacked and get root access to your box, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But I don't really care for uh, doing this distro review. So we'll just leave all of that as it is. And um, let's run this video wizard too. Let's see if that can figure out how to set my appropriate resolution, because right now it's very tiny. Um, let's see, is it gonna come up? All right, I might have to just do this the old fashioned way. <laughs> All right, let's see, X Randar. And it looks like I don't have the, um, I don't have a 1920 by 1080 mode. Okay, let me figure out how to do that real quick. All right, so we got X Randar, new mode, 1920 by 1080, 1440, 2248, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, 1080, All right, there we go. And a little bit of software gore, but whatever. That never hurt anybody. All right, so you can see uh, we have a whole bunch of applications that already come with it. Uh, let's take a look at Paint. I'm curious what this is. MT Paint, I don't think I've ever used this. It uh, looks a little bit like MS Paint, but with a black background by default. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, let's see. Oh, this is the square select thing. Let's do pencil. All right, let's uh, let's make a work of art here. So we'll say subscribe. Oh, that's a really crappy R. Um, eh, whatever. I don't know where the eraser is. <laughs> subscribe <laughs> to. Mental Outlaw. If you do, I'll have a big old smiley face like this guy. All right, so that is our paint application. Uh, whoa, why did it open two of them? Oh, I think, uh, 
What do I have? Single click to open everything? Yeah, single click to open everything. So this is our browser, and it looks like our browser is Pale Moon, which um, is really cool because, again, most people who are probably going to be using Puppy Linux are grandpas who are used to uh, the old layout that Firefox had, which is what Pale Moon pretty much has going on. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I think Pale Moon is also lighter than Firefox, so that's a good choice as well, uh, since it's supposed to be a lightweight distro. Um, let's see what else we have. Well, we might as well take a look at our console to see what our kernel that we're running is. And it's 5.4.53. So it's a little bit old, but it's not super radically old. Um, you could probably get a decent amount of software working on there. Now for installing new software on Puppy Linux, uh, you're going to be using the, I think they call it the Puppy Package Manager. Um, so you don't have, you know, like apt, you don't have uh, Pac-Man or Emerge or anything like that. So let's take a look at that Puppy Package Manager. You want to go down to Menu, Setup, and there we go, Puppy Package Manager. So we could take a look for some stuff to install. Let's see, is HTOP in here? Different versions, okay. Um, oh, I have HTOP installed already? Huh, well that alone makes Puppy Linux the best distro in the world, right? It actually comes with HTOP pre-installed. <laughs> so yeah, you can see uh, pretty lightweight, 563 megs of RAM at idle. Uh, I guess that's about normal for um, for a Linux distro. And plus, a really old laptop isn't going to be this high of a screen resolution anyway, so you'll probably save maybe another 100 megs or so uh, if you don't have a full HD computer. All right, um, so it looks like we have, is this LibreOffice? Um, is this? Oh no, it's ABI Word. Oh, okay, so this is like a simplified LibreOffice. I don't think I have any experience with this program, um, but this is pretty cool. I could dig it. Let's see what our calc is all about. I gotta remember that it's single click. <laughs> That's really throwing me off. I keep opening everything with uh, two things. So, good new Merrick. Um, I don't think I've used this either. This is just a bunch of software that I haven't used, but this looks pretty cool too. Simplified, uh, I guess it's a simplified version of LibreOffice Calc. And we've got Listen, which I'm guessing is some sort of a music player. Yep. Uh, Goggles Music Manager. <laughs> That's a pretty interesting name. All right, let's take a look at some of our other programs. So we've got file, which, uh, hmm, this is a very simplistic <laughs> file manager. Um, thumbs, okay, so another uh, piece of software I'm not really familiar with. That's what this mostly seems like, is that Puppy Linux is just including a lot of software that I'm not really familiar with. Um, let's see, yeah, help. So that probably just brings up that, uh, oh, it doesn't bring up the screen from the beginning. Gives you a bunch of how-tos. Well, that's pretty handy. And edit, let's see. Oh, this is Genie. Okay, finally, an application that I've actually used before. Hmm. I would think that this would be like G-Edit or something like that. Yeah, I always think of Genie as more of like an IDE and... G edit as something like notepad, you know? <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at email clause. That's our email service on here. Um, okay. All right, yeah, I'm not gonna actually set up an email. Um, chat, let's see. Oh, okay, so they got a nice little uh, hex chat in there. That's pretty cool. Another application I'm familiar with. Uh, we'll just quit out of this. 
before we end up going into a IRC chat full of weirdos. Uh, let's see what our calendar is like. Did my calendar actually open? What? Oh, I guess I gotta just go down there for it, or? Okay, the plan seven calendar thing is uh, kind of throwing me for a loop. And this is some type of a media player. Hey, they included MPV as the, okay. Puppy Linux is really trying to win me over <laughs> with some of these default software choices. That's pretty dope. All right, so let's actually uh, install it because right now we're in a live environment. And let's see. Um, I think I want to go with this one. Actually, I just remembered that my VM is not set up for UEFI. So you'll probably choose, uh, well, again, since this is used for older computers, I guess in general, you'd want to do this. It might make more sense to, to switch these around because a lot of older computers don't support UEFI. All right, so um, puppy installer, uh, yeah, from a, wait, what? All right, so I guess I would do it as an internal hard drive. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, oh, I got to format it myself? All right, well, that kind of sucks. Um, okay, so we're unallocated, and we'll do new. Okay, yeah, so um, create the partition table, and new, and uh, okay, so, and I swear, F using FDisk would literally be easier than doing this. So I want to leave about one gig for swap. So let's just do uh, like that, keep it simple. Um, primary partition, yeah, partition name, don't really need it. Okay, cool, so we got that. And it's ext4, and then this one is going to be... Um, do I even have an option to do swap? Huh. It's not an extended partition. Uh, Linux swap. Okay, there it is. <laughs> all right. Add um, and yeah, apply all operations. Apply. All right, let that do its thing. And close. All right, so now I can close out of this and select my drive. Okay, and we want to install Puppy to SDA1. Okay. Um, let me see. This will be a frugal install. You can choose to place the Puppy files in a folder. This is very convenient if you want to have more than one installation of Puppy, even if you have an installation. Um, sure. You have the option to install a bootloader named grub for dos Very simple exercise. Find all your previous windows. Yes. All right. Um, I don't think there's really uh, anything I need to do here, so OK. Um, boot flag not found. Proceed anyway. Hopefully it works. Um, the first entry is always shown regardless windows are, what? It's always shown regardless windows are installed or not recommended to, all right, sure. <laughs> um, okay. And okay. All right, and then we get uh, this bit here, so. I think I can close that and hit OK here. All right, we're all done. So let's uh, let's.
let's restart into actual Puppy Linux. Um, I'm gonna shut down because I'm not 100% sure whether or not I, uh, um, nah, I don't need to save the session. Not 100% sure if I set my, uh, my disk appropriately, so I gotta figure that out real quick. Um, yep, hard disk is first. So let's start her up. So this should be booted into the installed uh, Puppy Linux. Yeah, like this whole thing about Windows, like I, I don't even understand why they're doing that. It's so weird. I also don't know why the installation can't be simpler, because this is... This is supposed to be like a grandpa approved OS. I think it even says that on their uh, on their website that it's like easy for grandpas, but not the installation process, but you know, then again, <laughs> when I worked at Geek Squad, I had people asking me to help them set up Windows. So I don't think you can make the setup for any OS easy enough for some people to feel comfortable doing it. All right, so it wants me to, to speak the Queen's English again, but I refuse. Um, uh, yeah, video doesn't do anything. And host name, Heckin Pupperinos. Gotta, gotta use that as the name. All right. Changes applied successfully. Cool. Cool. Um... Yeah, let's restart X, since we changed the keyboard layout from the Queen's English. I do like that little startup thing, that little welcome with the bark. That's pretty cool. All right, and um, oh, let's see, Let, let's let's change our, uh, oh, now we have Conky popping up. Let's, let's change our um, screen resolution the normal person way. Um, hmm, which would it be? I guess this, right? Screen graphics wizard. There we go, screen resolution. And I still don't have my full resolution set or my full resolution available. Um, I guess that's the closest without going over. All right, and we get a little bit of software gore anyway. But uh, that's okay. A little bit of software gore never hurt anybody. All right, so uh, I've been looking at this distro for a little while now, about 23 minutes. So what are my final thoughts on Puppy Linux? Well, the installation was a little bit more complicated than I thought it would be. Uh, so I don't really think it's... Uh, I mean, once it's set up, it seems to just work. You know, everything works fine. It's a pretty straightforward, easy distro to use. It's laid out similarly to Windows, so it's easy to navigate once you've figured out how to install it, but like the installation difficulty is kind of on par with, um, it's not as hard as Arch, but it's it's kind of on par with like a Dev1, that um, Debian, sort of a fork that had uh what is it run it or open rc one of the two i knew i know it doesn't have system d that's like the whole idea behind it uh so yeah like for a regular user it's it's definitely not going to be easy to install but uh, i like how lightweight it is i like how simple it is once you get it running um, i really do like a lot of these default programs that they have like mpv and uh, htop let's actually make sure that htop is really there right because uh maybe it's not for some reason and it is so i really like stuff like that um i'd say maybe seven out of ten let me know what you guys think about puppy linux in the comments below peace out